Mac, maths, mac, maths, let's do some maths today. Statistics. Okay, so we're on to the second part uh, of the lessons. Uh, in oh, I'm talking rubbish again. Okay, so part B. Remember, I'm nervous about this, so just bear with me. I'm nervous about teaching this, so just bear with me. I've um, not taught statistics before, just learned how to do it. There's my little disclaimer in again. So, uh, in this short lesson, I'm just going to talk about the advantages and disadvantages and just go through random, systematic and stratified and explain the terms to you. Okay, so we've got random sampling, systematic, 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 yes, yeah, spell that right, and what's the other one? Oh yeah, stratif stratified. So you've got to learn these, just making sure that fits on the screen, it does. And we want advantages of those and disadvantages. And then we'll answer a few questions. Okay, uh, so there we go. Have well, I got my calculator? I have. Okay, so first of all, random sampling. So uh, the advantages of random sampling is, so let's just let's just make this nice for you. So as I make a hopeless attempt at explaining these, so random sampling, sometimes you, you see it referred to as like lottery sampling. You've got an equal chance. Um, you've got an equal chance of getting chosen. So that's an advantage of it. You know, it's an equal chance of getting chosen. Every, every person has an equal chance of getting chosen chosen it's meant to be free from i'll use a capital b bias okay so there's meant to be no influence in there it's meant to be free from um from bias so how do we get a random sample okay so first of all so let's have a look at uh let go back to our sample um of we talked about school didn't we as the the census the whole population um if you take a school, um, what you would need is um, to do a random sample is if you did it like a lottery style, um, you would give everyone a number in the school. If there was a thousand students, all the, st the students would have uh, a number one to a thousand. And then you just draw out of a hat like lottery sampling. That's why it's called lottery. You draw out a hat and if you wanted 30 people, you draw 30 numbers out. It's totally random. You just call out them and, you, and then you've got that person and you ask their opinion or whatever it is you're doing. OK, um, so where does the disadvantage come in then? So the disadvantage, of it, although it's like it's a good way of doing it in terms of it's free from bias and so on. The disadvantage is that you need what they call a sample frame. And the sample frame is the whole population that you're drawing from. So if there's a school of a thousand people, you you've got to give out a thousand tickets. So. A sample frame is a problem if the sample frame is the whole lot so the, that you take from. So the sample frame is a problem or a disadvantage if there's a large population. Because if your school is 10,000, I don't know if the school is 10,000 people are big. If the school is 10,000, then you've got to give 10,000 ticket, tickets out. Nightmare. Okay. So... You know, it's 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 quite easy to do, isn't it? Just calling out names or, you know, it's quick and it's easy, probably. Um, if there's a small population, but if there's a big population, there's a big sample frame. You've got to have a sample frame. And if it if it's, and it's a problem if it's a large, um, if it's a large population. OK, so that's random sampling. OK, what how else can you do it apart from lottery? Um, calculators have. A, a random, um, you'll see it on here somewhere. I've not seen it looked at it. There you go, random. Um, it's either that one there on the bottom, it's got R A N, or it might even be R N D on that one. I don't know. But I know that calculators have got a random um, number generator on it, so you can do it that way. And you can get tables, it's just a random numbers, 
as well so you can just pick from a table and they're just literally random numbers so you know the number 37 comes up you pick person number 37 and so on save drawing out of a hat so you can either draw out of a hat or use a random number a random number generator and they come on calculators computers will do it or um you can get um tables that are just a, a list basically of random numbers okay so learn that know that you can get a random number generator on a calculator if you wanted to know the term lottery sampling everyone gets a number you pick them out of a hat because you you'll get asked that you'll get how would you do it and you say give everyone a number pick numbers out of a hat okay that's random sampling um systematic sampling is really is like random sampling um but it's you know uh, a system used if you like um and again what are the other so that would be um you you still you have to randomly set, so see you got your population as your school you randomly set um you randomly um choose a person from that school okay and then after you've got that first one that's randomly chosen you take every 10th person after that so the next you know so if you if you randomly choose ticket number 37 you go right 37 i'm going to get 47 57 67 77 and you use a system after that um so the advantage again it's simple uh, simple and quick you know as soon as you decide you might decide to choose every 20th person or something like after that um and it's it's suitable for large populations, isn't it? So you've got a large population. Um, again, you can, you know, if you've got, a, you know, a million people, you can choose every thousandth person. OK, quick and simple can use. For large populations. Oops. OK, um, but again, you've got that same problem, haven't you? That actually sample frame is needed. You need data on all of those people to be able to choose them. So you need a sample frame it can be a problem again if the population is too large um, and I'm not so sure I agree, agree with this really but um, you, it can they do say that it can introduce bias if patterns exist because you choose in every sort of 30th person or something like that if there's a pattern in the data it's going to like a repeating pattern you're going to be picking up on that pattern aren't you i can't think of an example where that would be the case but that's just what the book sort of book says and i'm sure there are obscure cases where you know you tap into because you pick in systematically you tap into a pattern so uh, bias if patterns exist it can introduce a bias if patterns exist and then it's not random is it okay um stratified is this you know this from gcse i hope so using strata we'll look at an example of that from using strata so this is fair um this is fair the, the one that i always give to my class is that um on a council uh, imagine um that within a, a particular region there are oh in fact let's think of um um let's just stay, stay away from race because you always care you have to be careful what you say these days uh, no i'm going to stick with that you know with a particular council if they're within a within a, an area within a community say in warwick say there is 10 percent of an ethnic minority in the community then the council who runs um what goes on in that community it would only be fair i think that if the people that that within the community that are the ethnic minority say it's 10 percent that they are represented on the council that runs that area and so that so when you um have a a, a um it's like proportional representation then so when you have a council that you make sure that there are 10 percent of the ethnic minority on the council to to reflect what's happening in the, the wider community um it's sort of like you know, it doesn't work does it with you know half the population of this of this country 
are, are, are women and half men. So when we look at government, why are there more men in government than, than women? It shouldn't happen, should it? You look at the House of Commons or the House of Lords, there should be, I think so anyway, it should be 50% women and 50% men to represent. Uh, that would be stratified then to represent the country that they are governing. Okay, so stratified is that the advantage of it, 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 it represents... Um, uh, the, the strata, they call them the strata, the, the strips, the pieces, strata represents the population. That's that's the advantage, isn't it? So it, it becomes fairer. Uh, so if you're doing, if we go back to our school um, and you're doing a survey on school uniform, OK, if you've got a small sixth form, but a large year seven, you ask more year seven students, don't you, than you do sixth formers because there's more of them in the school. So in your sample that you take, you make sure that there's a higher number of year seven to reflect that in school and you work it out accurately. But the strata is that the, that the sample that you choose then represents the wider population. OK, and um, the disadvantages of stratify sampling, once you decided on that, it's the same as this then, isn't it? It's the same disadvantages that you've got for random sampling and that is that is you need a sample frame and you've got to choose those people so if it's a large population um, that you're choosing from um, then you need you know you need to know all the details to get a random sample from that so you know it's the same it's the same as this really the same disadvantages that you've got for random sampling because once you've decided on what percentage of your sample is going to be in each strata, um, then you've got the say these same problems. If you've got a large population, um, then um, you've got a lot of data to sort of collect in, haven't you? Okay. All right. So that's our three samples. So let's have a look at uh, a couple of questions. I'm gonna. My eye is caught um, straight away. It's just going to go through these ones. It's just giving you examples of. Um, really how to you know these sort of sorts of three okay so um when straight into this now um when i look at exercise sort of 1b um All of the answers are actually are explained in the back, so you can sort of do these sort of from the back. Um, but if you've just, what I'll do is I'll just do the first one actually. Um, I have done all of these because I went through them, you know, a couple of weeks ago, and they're all they're all sort of straightforward. Some of them I did have to look up in the back just to, you know, because I was doing it for the first time. Um, and and I, and when you look in the back, you get it. You go, oh yeah, okay. Um, but I'll just go through the stratified sampling just in case that you don't know. So um, this one here, this first one here, it says the head teacher of an infant school wishes to take a stratified sample um, of um, twenty percent of the pupils at the school. The school has the following numbers. So it has year one, year two, and year three in this school. And there are 40, 60 and 80 students. OK, and he wants to take a sample of 20 percent of the school. And it says uh, part A, so work out how many in each year group and describe one benefit the head of using a stratified sample. OK, so that was just straight from our advantages. So first of all, so we're doing a stratified sample of 20 percent of the school. So I get my calculator. Oh, I need a calculator for this really. Add them all up and you can see that in this school, the school population is 180 pupils. OK, 20% of this, 10% is 18, so 20%, 36 pupils. OK, so we want a sample of 36 pupils. We're going to ask those 36 pupils what they think of their school, OK, or what they think of uniform and so on. OK, but we want it to represent the school. So you can see here, this is a good one for describing stratified sample. There's twice as many year three than year one. So that means that in our sample of 36 students, we've got to have twice as many year three students than year one students. OK, so how do you do it? Well, this is how I do it. 
okay, is I create the fraction and times it by the sample size. So the, the sample uh, of year one, okay, the fraction of year one is 40 students out of 180, okay? So it's 40 one and it's of the school are year one students. So we want 40 one of 36 students. So you just times by 36, okay? So create the fraction and times by the sample size. Okay, so create fraction and then times by sample size that you want. Always works, okay? So you just simply do 40 divided by 180, whatever fraction that is, turn it on, McCray, you idiot. 40 divided by 180 and then just times it by 36 and it tells you that you want 8 um, year 1. Year 2 is 60 out of 180 times by 36. You can see that's a third. A third of that is going to be 12. Okay. And year 3, this all works out so it's 80 one but you know that's going to be twice as much as 40 one so it's going to be 16. You add those up, you do get 36. Okay, so there you go. You ask 30, 16 year threes, 12 year twos, and eight year ones. Now, when you're doing stratified sampling, as you know, it's always about people and persons. It's not always going to be a nice whole number, and you just round to the nearest person. Okay, so you get 16.1, you ask 16 people, you get 16.8, you ask 17 people. Okay, you can adjust your sample size slightly if it's a problem, or take one less out of the biggest group. You know and it's going to be there or thereabouts okay for the purposes you know this is not real math is it this is just choosing people to get an opinion okay so being half a person out is not going to be a problem okay so that's exercise 1b and that's the three types of sampling effectively they're all connected because they're all a type of random sampling okay thank you